I want to talk about de Moivre's theorem. It's a big, uh, it sounds really fancy, but it's really something that we are, we're almost, we almost know already. It's just a simple extension of what happened with the, uh, the law that we found, we discovered with uh, using Sketchpad and doing some by hand calculations about multiplying complex numbers. We know that when we multiply complex numbers, the magnitudes multiply, the arguments add. And so it tells us if we put them in polar form, then things uh, look simple for multiplication. And then the question is, what happens when we square a complex number? Or take a higher power, but let's look at a square first. So let me use the tool here. Um, let's do complex multiplication. And it's going to ask me for two points. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make the two points the same. Okay. So I'm going to say one point is there and the other point is here too. So I'm going to get m and then m times m. And then the question is, what's happening as I move m around? What is m times m looking like? Well, what I need to do is, well, let's, let's make a little segment that can be often be useful to see the angles and stuff. And then let's measure a couple things. We're just going to measure the coordinate distance there. Oh, and let's make a segment here for the square. And then I'm going to measure the coordinate distance here. OK, so what's it looking like? Well, what should it be? Well, if the magnitudes multiply, and I'm, multi I'm having the same number times itself, the magnitude should be just be squaring. So if the magnitude is 1 to start with, it's going to be 1 on the square. If the magnitude is 2 to start with, see if I can fit that on the page. The magnitude of the original one, that's 2. The ma this is a complicated way of saying the magnitude of the square. That's about 4. Okay, So the magnitude is just squaring. And what should the angle do? Well, it should be adding to itself. Let's just check that. So in other words, it should be doubling. Let's see. Let's just measure the angle here. So that's the angle we started with. That's the original argument. If I had time, I would relabel those, but let's not worry about it. I don't want to make the video any longer. Let's measure that angle. Should be double. You betcha. 35 and a half, 71. If this is about 45, then we get 90. That's interesting. We we uh, did an experiment where we tried to find the square root of i. Well, here we go. That's how you can find the square root of i using Sketchpad and using this particular sketch. There it is. There's the mystery number m that when you square it, it gets it gets uh, sent to to i. Because remember, this one up here on the imaginary axis is really i. It's something that's at 45 degrees and radius one. We could figure out the a plus b i of that without too much trouble. For and let's check i squared. You betcha. Magnitude 1 turns into magnitude 1, and angle 90 turns into angle 180. Okay, It starts to take it negative, but that's just it's just getting confused. Okay, so that's a pretty simple rule. When you square a complex number, the magnitude squares, and the argument, in other words, the direction information doubles. Okay, And what about, what if you take the nth power? Well, that's just multiplying something by itself n times. So the magnitude will go to the nth power. And the argument will get multiplied by n. OK, so that's all in words. Now we need some symbols. If z is the complex number, and remember how you wrote it right in, po in polar form, you factor out an r, which is your scale factor. That's your magnitude, times cosine theta plus i sine theta. And if you want to, you can always abbreviate that as r cis theta for cosine plus i sine. Okay. So suppose that's my original complex number. Then z the, what I'm saying is that z to the n can be described in polar form. You don't have to make this into a plus bi, multiply it out, and then put it back into polar. It's actually easier if you leave it in polar. The magnitude gets raised to the nth power. And the angle, whoops, the argument gets multiplied by n. Okay. For example, okay. Suppose I have z is uh, has magnitude three and is at two pi over three. Oops, just kidding. Okay, then what is z to the n? So, so let's say z cubed, 
just kidding again. Okay, ZQ. So this is really, really important. You don't unpack this and evaluate stuff and then do an algebra operation. You don't do any work whatsoever. This is the beauty of de Moivre's theorem. You, we use this rule that the magnitude is going to do something simple. Namely, it's going to cube, and that's going to be 27. And then the argument is going to triple. Oh, wait, so I don't need a fraction anymore. If I'm taking the cube, I'm going to triple that. I'm going to get 2 pi. And you might be noticing that I set this up so I would get a very simple, nice answer. Oops. OK, now you could just leave it that way. This is in polar form. You say, you're saying that if I take the number, let's actually, uh, let's actually do this example here. Oh, actually, I picked, as usual, I picked one that doesn't fit well on the picture. Well, let's zoom it way in. OK. Mm. No, I can't do that. OK. I'm not going to do the picture of this one because the 27 just wouldn't fit. But I picked a number that's really this fairly nice in polar form. And then here's the polar form of the answer. In a way, I'm done. But it's, it's just too tempting to put this into a plus bi because these are such nice numbers. Cosine of 2 pi is 1. Sine of 2 pi is 0. And so in fact, I get a surprising answer. I found a cube root of 27. Well, we thought we kind of knew the cube root of 27 was 3. Well, this is saying that there's another number that cu cubes to 27. In fact, there's three numbers, but two of them are complex. And we're going to figure out how to find them. That's going to be the opposite of this process um, just in, in, a, in a day or so. Okay. So another example would be, um, let's start. Here's the harder part. Start with like a plus bi. OK. What happens if you start with a plus bi? And I'm probably going to have to do this in another video. In fact, yeah, let me do that. So in the next video, what I'll do is we'll start with an a plus bi form, and we'll convert it into polar form for the purpose of taking a power. And that'll be uh, a demonstration of the real power of de Moivre's theorem.